Hello again, it's Mr. Pete, your interweb shop teacher, and this is short subject number 16, entitled Shrink Rules, sometimes called Shrinkage Rules, and it's all about pattern making and what are these different lengths, one foot rulers, all about in the pattern shop. So let's talk about the rules and let's talk about shrinkage and castings and patterns. At the end of the video are many still pictures of pages out of different catalogs and different textbooks giving a description and analysis of what shrinkage is when metal cools. So in order for the pattern maker to end up with a casting the actual size he wants, the pattern must be slightly larger and that is usually done rather than by calculations with shrink rules. Now you can still buy these but I think it's becoming a thing of the past and you might see them from time to time at flea markets. Here's a Lufkin that was still in the ruler case here, the sleeve, and this particular one was number C83A and the shrink rate was 1 16th of an inch per foot. Now in my hand here I have Five rules, not rulers. Boy, somebody got so mad when I call these rulers. You know, they want to argue semantics. Rules is correct, admittedly. All right, this rule here is a 12-inch regular ruler. It's not a shrink rule. And here we have four more shrink rules, and each one is a slightly different shrink rate. So let me stack these like this, tapping them down so that they are even on this end, but look at, they are all different lengths. And boy, that can be confusing if you grab one of these and use it by mistake. So be sure and look at what the ruler says on it, because if it is a shrink rule, it will always tell. And there's a 5 30 seconds, a 3 16 and a 5 16 And I'll show you now a chart that... Uh, tells you what rule to use and how much the shrink rate is for different metals. This picture is from a 1935 Brown and Sharp catalog and they have all kinds of rules for sale here as you can see but the pattern maker would have to decide on which ruler he needs, which rule that would be. You know I'm going to goof up that word all the time so don't worry about it but for aluminum really is the only material that I ever cast, I used the 3 16 shrink in inches per foot. So this is the rule that I use. The others I have never actually used, but it's neat to have a complete set. Actually, it's not a complete set. There's just four random rules here that were given to me. Okay, here's a wooden pattern that I made a few years ago, 2018 to be exact, and this is a little work table for that mead sander that I rebuilt and restored, so you might have watched that video, and this is the finished casting. Now, it really doesn't matter if this was a little bit out of dimension, you know, whether it's 7 inches or 8 inches, you know, it does, it's, it's 8 inches, but it couldn't matter less. So I didn't use a shrink rule when I made this pattern because I just didn't deem it necessary at all. But I wanted, I pulled this out to illustrate to you the difference in size between the original wooden pattern and the final casting. So to do that, I'm just going to place them back to back like this and get them adjusted two ways and you can see here that the casting is it looks like almost an eighth of an inch smaller in that direction as well as that direction so that's what the shrinkage is all about it's not something that uh, George Costanza talks about but it's a very real thing here in the foundry or in the pattern shop that has to be taken into account at all times by the pattern maker. So some people have never really heard about this, but I think it's a it's a neat phenomenon that as metal cools it just reduces in uh, in size, both length, width, and thickness. 
It seems like I'm always making patterns, and these are split patterns, to cast wheels for sanders and different projects like that. But lately I've been using 3D printing, and I know that people don't like to watch that, so I don't talk much about it. But it's very easy when you have 3D printed patterns. Oh boy, those things are slippery. If this ended up being too small or too large, I can go right back into the program and enlarge it or reduce it and then print it out again. So that's pretty neat in regards to changing the size of patterns because with a wooden pattern, if you end up with the wrong dimension, you're back to the wood shop and a lot of work to remake the pattern to either reduce it or enlarge it in size. I love the elegant shape and curves of an outside caliper, don't you? But I was going to use this to compare the measurement here on the pattern with the finished casting, but it just doesn't show up very well in photography here so, or in the video. So let me try that another way to just contrast the difference between the two, and I'll do it with the small wheels as well. Okay, here's the right way to do this so that you can understand what I'm talking about. I have these two brown and sharp heads up against the pattern. Pretty good fit there. Now if I do that with the casting here, however, yes, we have a parting line here and I did have to file that off a little bit years ago, but let's see what the difference is between the pattern and the casting. You can see here that it is considerable. Remember that shrink rate of 3 16 is shrinkage per foot and this is only like a four inch wheel or so so that's pretty interesting isn't it remember that when the pattern maker makes a pattern he must also allow for machining it's called a machining allowance so that after this is cleaned up on the lathe it will be the right size let's do the same thing with the small wheels no big deal, it's repetition. And the same thing here with the 3 inch wheel. You know, this ruler is annoying because it's an 18 inch rule, which I do not need, but anyway, there it is on the pattern. And here is the casting, and I just took this to the sander and knocked off the flashing there, but it, the difference will not be as dramatic because it's a smaller casting, but you can see that it is a different size. And let's see how much machining allowance that I had on this so that it ended up being three inches or thereabouts because not only was this turned to diameter, it is also turned with a taper or a crown on it to allow the belt to track. So taking that out of the square and putting this one in, you can see that there was quite a bit of material allowed for machining. I probably shouldn't confuse you by talking about double shrinkage, but let me do that anyway. It'll take a couple minutes. Quite often, when they would cast something like this in a big foundry, they're going to make a match plate and have six, eight, ten, or a dozen of these on one plate so they can cast them all at the same time. So more than likely, rather than make twelve wooden patterns, it would be quite a job, and the wooden patterns are kind of delicate compared to a metal pattern that's going to be banged around in a foundry for many years. So what they often do is make a wooden pattern and from the wooden pattern they would cast up a dozen or more, however many they needed, metal patterns. Of course they'd be split patterns, not a solid casting, a split pattern. And uh, those would be mounted on the board. 12 of them and all connected with uh, gates and runners and all of that good stuff. Well, you can imagine that from a pattern to a casting to other castings made from this metal pattern, we're going to have double shrinkage. So the pattern maker would have to use a double shrink rule. I don't think they make such a thing. So instead of using a 3 16 inch per foot shrink rule, he would use a 3 8 shrink rule. Is that clear as mud? At the end of this video, I have taken pictures of some of the pages out of these three books. Here is a pattern making book that I had in junior college. Look at my name is in there, 1962. My handwriting hasn't improved either. But also, 
a few uh, paragraphs out of the Navspurs manual. I know that Sandrammer likes that, and also out of the American Foundryman's book. So that's all really good stuff, and I'm giving them credit for that right now. You know what? My short subject videos are a total failure in that I'm not able to keep them as short as I wanted to. I wanted to have them to be three or four minutes, but they always end up being ten or more minutes. But I want to ask you, what is the purpose of some of these other short videos that people are making? They're called shorts, and they're less than a minute. I find them to be virtually worthless. I, I don't understand the value or purpose of that, and I do not intend to do that. Mine are, will not be one minute long. Well, that concludes this video. I hope you got something out of it if you're interested in patterns and foundry work. Now, there's going to be a little extra credit right now. And after the extra credit, a lot of still pictures, as I already told you. But now I'm going to reminisce about my childhood and pattern makers' rule, rules. Sorry. No, I'm not sorry. I just misspoke. All right. You can... Uh, you can go to bed now, unless you want to see the, the extra credit. Okay, this is optional extra credit. I want to talk about when I was 10 or 12 years old, my dad had a little shop in the basement, and dad uh, taught pattern making and foundry in the junior college, and he also did some pattern making in the basement. I remember him putting fillets in and all that stuff when I was a child and I was kind of I was very interested in seeing him work with the leather and wax and all of that stuff but anyway my brother and I were down in the shop but like I say we were 10 or 12 years old and we were making something and we just grabbed a ruler and uh, you know kids are pretty sloppy anyway but when we got done with the project it was all wrong every dimension was wrong and dad had rulers like this but what we didn't know is they were shrink rules. So we were using them as regular rules <laughs> and really botched up our projects. Eventually, you know, it said right on there, but kids don't read. This one is not a shrink rule, but Dad had one. And then in later years, I looked at it and I said, that is the problem. I don't think I ever just plain went upstairs and said, hey, Dad, you got some faulty rulers. But I do think that at some point there, I took those wooden rules and I put them side by side and I thought, well, they're just defective rulers that got rules that got out of the factory and uh, their quality control wasn't very good because the length of the rules was incorrect. Well, did that amuse you at all? So shrink rules should be kept in a separate cabinet or area where the average person isn't going to grab them and use them and spoil his work. All right, I'll see you next time. This is Mr. Pete, your interweb shop teacher.